There we go. Okay. Technical difficulties. Woo. <laughs> Good thing we work in tech. All right. So I'm going to be talking. Okay, I'm going to be talking about building e-commerce storefronts on the Jamstack, uh, particularly with big commerce and the Jamstack. Uh, first, I'm going to start with some intros, though. So what is big commerce? Big commerce is an e-commerce platform. Uh, we're an open SaaS, API-first, flexible platform. And what does that mean? So SaaS, uh, as you guys are all properly familiar, is software as a service, so we're hosted. Um, but because we're API-first, we make it easy for developers and merchants to use the tools of their choice and get that really custom, flexible build. Who am I? I'm Ashley McKimmy. I'm a product manager at Big Commerce. Uh, these are the three products that I focus on: third-party storefronts, channels, and webhooks. Uh, primarily, what I'll be talking today about are the third-party storefronts and channels, which is how um, is the product that enables developers to build sales channels um, off of the Big Commerce platform. So that includes uh, any custom storefront, but also things like marketplaces, Amazon, POSs like Square, Clover, etc. OK, and I'm hoping this works. And of course, on my first time, I'm doing a live demo. So uh, demo gods, be with me. Uh, so we're going to do a, I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to spin up a headless storefront with Gatsby, Netlify, and Big Commerce. So first, uh, this is a starter app that we built with um, the gracious help of a partner of ours, Third and Grove. Uh, and this is the, the uh, GitHub repo that you can access. It's available now. It's open source. Uh, and we will also have it on the Netlify templates as well. There's also a Gatsby source plugin for big commerce as well. OK. So all right, perfect. So I did an, an effort to keep things uh, quicker. I did already do a lot of things uh, just to spin it up, um, including uh, fork the repo, which you're going to obviously have to do. I have set up, uh, done all, run all the dependencies, set up a Gatsby and Netlify CLI, and also created a big commerce instance, uh, which you're going to need so that you can get the API keys and then a lot of the uh, e-commerce functionality. Um, but what I'm going to start with is right here. And you'll see just hopefully how easy it is to spin this up. All right, so what I'm doing right now is um, <clears throat> copying the, my, or entering my big commerce API credentials into here. This is going to be obviously very important. Otherwise, the, um, the Gatsby uh, app and site is not going to be able to uh, connect to the big commerce uh, API. All right. And um, so next thing, I'm going to be using the Netlify CLI. Obviously, there's a lot of different ways that you can spin up a Netlify site. Uh, some of the easy ones, obviously, are you, know, you can go here and spin it up from Git. I'm actually going to just link it to a connecting site that I already have, which is this one. Um, and then we, we also have instructions there if you want to run it locally with Netlify dev or even just a local build. OK, so connecting. All right, and then next, and this is going to take a second, but I'm running the npm build commands. Um, and hopefully, while that goes, what I want to do show you is um, what this is the big commerce admin control panel where merchants and developers will go in, set up the store. Uh, this is important because you're going to have to set up a couple things initially just to get a store live so that the uh, so it can process transactions for uh, the headless storefront. There's a couple things that um, as it's building, I'll show you what you need to set up. <clears throat> Primarily, uh, payments, kind of important. As a merchant, you want to make sure you get paid when you send people products. Uh, right now, all big commerce storefronts come pre-configured and set up with PayPal by Braintree. You will need to connect your account or create one if you don't have one, but it's really simple. You can see it's already there, toggled on. I've also um, set up test card, uh, credit card payments so that when I actually process a transaction in just a little bit, I don't actually have to pay for it. <laughs> Um, we also need to set up shipping and tax uh, just so that whenever the uh, price or the total cost of the order is shown to the shopper, uh, it has the, those two uh, calculated into it. All right, it is built. So now I am going to deploy it. And so I just want to um, say that I didn't do anything. Like this is literally just pulled from the master and uh, has all the out of the box functionality. So 
I'm going to talk a little bit more about how, like, what you can do to customize it and all of that. But um, so if you were to spin this, pull the same thing down, you would see the same uh, e-commerce storefront. And hopefully, it will go live soon. <laughs> all right. So let's take a look at what this e-commerce site looks like. All right, awesome. It worked. Woo. <laughs> uh, so out of the box, the BigCommerce Gatsby Netlify starter comes with a couple of main pages that are really critical for you as a developer set up for a merchant if you're building an e-commerce site. Things like the main home page where the shopper's getting their very first introduction to the brand experience, um, an about page which tells, you know, it gives you the opportunity as a merchant to tell the shopper what you are about. But the one that we really care about is the products page. Where, what are you selling, and how do you discover those products as a shopper? So, and this is where a lot of the meat of the functionality in our starter is. Uh, right now, what it's doing is pulling from the BigCommerce catalog API. <clears throat> and these are, every BigCommerce store comes preceded with sample products. Uh, so these are what are in there, obviously, as if you're launching a real e-commerce site, you input your products. Um, so a couple things that are included is add to cart. We have a mini cart already built. Again, this is all out-of-the-box functionality. Um, and then another core page is what we call the PDP, product uh, detail page. And this is where, again, it's pulling a lot more de uh, detailed information from the Big Commerce catalog API. Uh, here's where you could add a lot of configuration. For example, if you're an apparel merchant uh, or a developer building an apparel site, um, you would pull in options. You could pull in things like color, sizes, patterns, et cetera, and show those uh, with images and swatches here. Uh, add to cart functionality also works out of the box on this page. And let's go, um, uh-oh, maybe I didn't click on it. There we go. All right, and so there's also, you can remove it, built in again. And uh, what I'm going to do is walk through a quick uh, checkout. So what comes, we have a couple options for checkout, especially for building headless PWA websites. Uh, what this first one is is called redirected checkout. It takes you from the headless storefront to the hosted big commerce one. This is ideal if you as, uh, don't have a lot of developer experience or Lyft or budget and just want to use what is already PCI and secure from big commerce. Uh, but I will talk about other options that allow you to keep the shopper on the merchant site or um, you know, build a fully custom checkout as you want. And so going through, this is what the shopper experience would look like. Um, you can see the free shipping. And again, this is all functionality that like, I literally spun up in five minutes. Um, test card, it does tell you this in the BigCommerce control panel, so you don't need to memorize that or know. Um, and you can use any values. And order should go through. All right, so that was as easy it is, is to set up a pretty functioning uh, e-commerce site. Um, obviously, you probably want it to look more like the brand experience and uh, have a lot more complex, robust functionality. So let's talk about uh, some ways that you can get to that. So uh, in addition to what comes out of the box, there's a lot of ways that with big commerce, you can extend this e-commerce storefront. Um, pretty, as I mentioned, we're API first. So all of this uh, functionality can be added via our APIs and SDKs. Now, obviously, this is not a comprehensive list, uh, but these are some of the more common uh, e-commerce pieces of functionality that people are going to want to add to their website. And all of these, again, are available via API. OK, so what would you want to do with uh, the B big commerce headless options? Um, and what use cases are we enabling? Our biggest focus is on building differentiated shopper experiences. And this is really where we're leaning into the Jamstack uh, and headless uh, storefronts. Now, the first two options show uh, a different configuration of how you can set up e-commerce with big commerce. We do have our own native stencil storefront, which works really well for certain merchants. Um, but Obviously, where we're interested is the PWA and the Jamstack. Um, so what this uh, diagram is really showing is just how easy um, or how we're leaning in to this and allowing you to configure a PWA, store, PWA storefront with your front end uh, technology tools and frameworks of choice. Um, obviously, I showed Gatsby, but you can do it with Next, Nuxt, um, any of Vue, uh, Deity, anything that you want. And then you can connect it into uh, your own, out of our own out of the box product management, order management, or SaaS, or open source uh, functionality, whatever makes sense for the uh, merchant's business use case. Okay. 
Um, so a couple like actual use cases. What can you really do and build, like what kind of sophisticated functionality can you build for e-commerce uh, merchants? So with Headless, it makes it really easy because of the technology that we've exposed via APIs, which I'll go into in a little bit, to build multi-site uh, uh, e-commerce sites. So this can be B2C and B2B. So if a merchant wants one storefront that's targeting the cons uh, you know, you and I, and then one that's targeting businesses. Or you can also build multi-region and international, which is really, uh, really nice. Uh, we also are working on our own native uh, multi-region functionality. But with Headless, you can do this out of the box, um, as is today. And what you're seeing in these uh, videos are uh, on the top, it's actually being able to set the different, um, what we call listings, so different catalog data. So as a merchant, if you want to have an English catalog and then also a Spanish one, you can do that without uh, making overriding your data, essentially. And then on the bottom, you're seeing an actual site that's built. This is, happens to be on WordPress, um, but it's using the same APIs under the hood that any PWA storefront would use. And you can see how, based on the uh, shopper's location or their choice, they can see, one, the, different uh, the product details in different languages, but also in different prices in the currency of their choice. OK, so going beyond the Gatsby starter, what else are we doing? I mean, it's, we don't only have a Gatsby Netlify starter. We've tried to lean into the Jamstack and are continuing to do so in other ways. And there's three main ways that I want to talk about uh, today. So one is partners and connectors. Um, we've really started the process in the last year of leaning in and partnering with leading PWA storefronts. Uh, making the goal of having big commerce be the preferred way to b build these websites, especially for e-commerce. Uh, so these three, Deity, Vue, and Gatsby, are three that we actually have had partners uh, or have partnerships with. Deity and Gatsby, we have starter applications that one I just demoed that you can get that really quick build, uh, which is nice for, as a developer. And then Vue, we're actually doing a, a webinar on November 13th that you can sign up for. We have some technology leaders from Vue and from Big Commerce talking about how to build an e-commerce site using both of those technologies. Uh, so uh, I want to thank Amit for bringing up WordPress first, so I wasn't the first one to. <laughs> uh, but we also have a lot of CMS connectors. This is going to be more, uh, you know, depending on if your merchant um, or whoever your client is needs one of these CMSs, maybe they already use it, um, or they just want something that's a little bit more self-serve. We do offer uh, six uh, headless, con or headless CMS connectors that Depending on which one it is, WordPress, Drupal, Bloomreach, they're going to have some slightly different functionality. But again, under the hood, all connect to the same BC APIs that you would build with um, a PWA storefront. All right, but this is the one that's really interesting, I think, to all of you guys, is how do you build a custom storefront, uh, especially if you aren't wanting to use the Gatsby starter that I just demoed. Um, we wanted to make sure at BigCommerce that we weren't limiting you to existing connectors or starter apps. We wanted to make sure that we built platform and API first so you can take those APIs and that data and build using your tools and frameworks of choice. Um, so I have, I'm going to talk about these four uh, different APIs and SDKs. Of course, there's a lot more APIs that you'll want to pull data from. Uh, the full list of public APIs that are available is noted there on the uh, URL. So let's talk about the channel and listings API. Um, you'll see the Postman and the data request up on the right. Uh, and this is core to any, building any um, headless storefront. Because what's really important here is that you're registering as a channel so that when a merchant is managing that catalog, they can easily denote which products they want to be sent to which channel. And even if it's just one, it makes it easy for them to correlate their catalog uh, with the appropriate sales channel. And as I talked about earlier, listings allows you to differentiate uh, those catalogs. So you may decide, like in this example, that there's a B2B and, you, and uh, then a B2C website, and you want to merchandise that data differently. You would use the listings, catalog, or listings API to do that. OK, sites and routes. This is super important, because if you as a developer are uh, building a site and you want to make sure that the shopper gets the right links when they've ordered a product or are doing returns, or let's say abandoned cart notifications, you want to make sure they get the URL to the headless storefront and URL not to, let's say, the uh, BC store uh, URL that comes out of the box. Uh, you can register those sites and the different routes. This is going to be. Uh, things like your product pages, your account, like customer login pages. So Sites allows you to register the domain, and Routes gives you the flexibility and customize, uh, customization to set whatever uh, paths on the URL that you want. 
All right, and also super exciting is our uh, storefront GraphQL, uh, GraphQL API, which is recently in open beta. Yay, team. Um, this elevates all the data that used to come from the back end to serve our, just this, our Stencil native storefront, but now is available for you to use uh, in, for any storefront uh, tool or framework of your choice. And it's going to include all of the data that's necessary to serve the, data, uh, serve the products and shopper experience on a front end. All right. And so like I mentioned earlier, we do have uh, three main checkout options. This is, uh, we wanted to make sure that not only are we serving those uh, developers and merchants who don't want to worry about security and compliance, but, and, and then also those who do want to create a totally custom uh, checkout experience that keeps it, the shopper in the branded uh, e-commerce experience. And it really just depends. Uh, your choice of these is going to depend, like I said, on the development lift, the customization budget, all those factors that play into like, what te technology you choose. Uh, so the first one's redirected. That's the one I demoed earlier in the uh, Gatsby starter app. There's also self-hosted checkout, which means that you use our server-to-server -server cart and checkout APIs to take a order, or sorry, um, an order from cart all the way to checkout and returns and all of that. You can do that. Worth noting, and I guess this one is uh, completely customizable, so it's pixel for pixel what you would want to create that uh, on your website. Worth noting, though, that in, if you do choose this one, you do have to main maintain security and PCI compliance, so that's just something you'd need to consider. And then finally, kind of the happy middle one is embedded checkout. That's actually our hosted checkout, but I framed into the uh, headless storefront. So this gives you the ability to keep the shopper on the storefront without having to maintain security and PCI compliance. OK, and so last piece is developer enablement. Um, I wouldn't be here talking to you if we didn't care about our, our developer users. That's what I focus on day in and day out. I used to be a developer, so it, I know just how important it is to make sure that it's easy to find the data you need, the info you need, and the resources, and get started quickly. Um, so we know e-commerce is complex, but we want to make sure that building a headless storefront is not for you. So we're definitely, there's always room to grow, um, but we're really investing in this heavily, and this is by no means a comprehensive list, but I wanted to provide you guys, because I'll be sending this uh, presentation out on Twitter, and also there's a Jamstack uh, Slack channel that I'll share this so that you guys can get these links. And so based on uh, what you're looking to build, we have a full headless implementation guide that really goes a lot more into detail than what I'm able to cover in this presentation, tutorials on every part of uh, building a headless storefront, and then there's also API client libraries, depending on your language of choice. You can get spun up really quickly with our APIs. And then there's a lot of um, open source projects, code samples, reference implementations. So if, for example, you're building, let's say, a Ga the Gatsby starter, uh, or building off the Gatsby starter, and you want to add some functionality that's not in there, it's likely that we have good reference Im implementations within another one of our headless builds, like WordPress, for example. All right. So that was it. Um, I think I made it in almost a little over time. But thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate your patience with the technical difficulties. Um, this is the link, like I mentioned, to the Gatsby starter. Um, some more resources if you want. And if you have any follow-up questions or thoughts or anything, um, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.